Good morning, my name is Jason. I'm the Petal Fed uh, here at Petal Alexandria. Today we are here with Rufus so that I can show you what to do in terms of looking out for parasites in your dogs. Now that it's summer, the risk of paralysis ticks are actually quite high. Now paralysis tick is a rather deadly um, parasite that your dogs can get. Uh, it's called paralysis ticks because when they inject the animal with the venom, within a week, normally three to five days, your animal can start to show signs of severe paralysis, including, but not limited to, vomiting, uh, weakness in the back legs and coordination, heavy panting, and if serious enough, they can uh, collapse and, and they, it, they normally die from having their respiratory muscle um, undergoing paralysis at the same time. So the best way to prevent paralysis take is to uh, A, keep your animal regularly on parasite prevention. I personally prefer uh, NextGuard Spectra the most because it does everything in the one uh, and I just give it to my dog once a month. All right, so places where paralysis take like to hide is away from the light. So one of the first places that I normally check is the ear. Now when checking for paralysis take, it's very important to go through your animal system medically. It's very easy to get lost if you start at the head, go to the tail and then back up to the head again. So I would say start off with the head area first. Look out for under the ears, normally they, they like to hide in these little area and sometimes even inside your ear canal which will be a bit hard for you to see without light. So always worth to just have your phone there and just shine down to have a good look. Start to move down to the eyes. Sometimes they can hide right at the eyelid. They like to choose area where there's less hair so they can easily reach the blood supplies underneath. So have a look at the eyes here and there as well. And then once you've done the eye, just start going towards the nose. Have a good look, have a good feel around as well. If at any point in time you can feel a little bump on the skin, just investigate it a bit more vigorously. And then last but not least on the mouth is around here, under the, the lips. This is the area where the ticks like to hide the most because it's nice, warm, wet, and it's close to the blood supply. So if your dog has a collar, it's worth moving the collar up and down and or taking it off or flipping it inside out to just make sure no ticks are hiding underneath. Now, uh, once the head is finished, you move on to the rest of the body where there's a bit more hair coverage, so to speak. Whenever you're dealing with an animal that's a bit hairy or they haven't been shown uh, or clipped, the most important thing is to move the hair away from its normal direction. So if all your hair is growing towards the head, just push them back towards the tail. What you want to see is parting the hair until you can see this underlying pinkness to it, like this. Now Rufus's colour is such that um, all the little spots can make it look like takes. so just be very careful to, that you check everywhere. Do a, do a pet down search like this, down the legs as well. So I normally call this area the thorax, which is the area that I check after the head. So in this area, the most common places for them to hide is in the armpit area. So make sure you have a good check of the armpit area. And then in between the toes, which most animals don't like being touched at, but you'll have to do it. So do something like this, part the toes, push the hair up, and repeat that all across each leg. Also very important to check the underside of the, of the toes in these little crevices to make sure that no ticks are hiding underneath there as well. So repeat this on both the legs, and then I normally move on to what we call um, the trunk area. So this area is where I call the trunk. Normally I'll check the very underbelly of the trunk quite a lot as well. Uh, so easiest is to get them to lie down, but for here we'll just do this. As you can see here, this is actually one of the, the nipples of the dog, but it can look like a tick to the untrained eye. The, the way to tell is to actually have a proper look and see if you can see any little legs. Uh, if it's a tick, it will have little legs sticking out towards the front of it. If it's a nipple, there will be no legs sticking out on the sides. So here we can see this is clearly just an, a nipple. Luckily Rufus has less hair down here, but for your hairy adult, you have to repeat what you do before. Just flow, uh, flick the hair away from its flow direction and then have a proper look down towards the skin. So towards the back area, it's very much the same with the front legs. So I would like you guys to check uh, the groin, so which is the armpit and the front leg, but groin and the back leg. This area is commonly a very good place for ticks to hide as well. So just repeat what you do before, push the hair away and then have a proper look down towards the skin. Pat it down, pat your animal down until you get to the back legs. 
Again, have a look underneath the paw and then part the skin, uh, part the toes and then have a look at the webbing area. And last but not least, the tail area. So normally it would be around the anus of the animal where you can find another tick here and there. So uh, if Rufus was a girl, you would check the vulva area as well. Now, whenever you do find a tick, um, it is worth um, keeping in mind that don't try to burn it off, don't try to put salt on it. Uh, there are proper tick removal equipments that you can use or alternatively take your animal to the vet as soon as possible. Your vet will probably advise that they would need to shave your animal entirely and I would strongly recommend not putting up a fight against this. Normally where there's one tick, you can generally find two or three more. So it's very important for the vet to shave your animal entirely to be safe, to make sure there's nothing else hidden. Now, uh, luckily, there is an anti-tick serum that you can give for animals that have been bitten by a tick. Um, but the chances of um, saving your animals is not 100%. So whenever you do find a tick on your animal, time is of the essence. The earlier you get to the vet, the better your chances and to be very cooperative with your vet. All right, now um, the worst parasite has been discussed, so we'll move on to the other ones. Fleas, so fleas like takes of parasites that exist on the outside of the body. They are a lot more numerous normally and a lot easier to find. Like the takes, the fleas like to hide in area that are away from the light. So typically towards the bum area or in the under armpit area. Uh, but all you do is, as such, you just push this, uh, the hair away from its growth direction. And normally if an animal has a lot of fleas, you would see little black spots running across the skin. Luckily for Rufus, his parents have been diligent, so he does not have any fleas. All right, so that's how you check for the flea and the tick. Now keep in mind that prevention is way better than treatment. So please make sure your animals are always up to date with their uh, fleas and tick prevention and very importantly keeping a very short cut in summer just helps immensely. I would recommend to our friends who take their dogs out to the bush area or go camping or live around this, uh, the, the national parks area to just regularly check your pets. So say if they have had a bit of a run, went to the toilet in the bush, it's always worth every day just to at least check once or twice for ticks around your, your, uh, their bodies just to be safe. Now, um, it's very hot summer, so everybody stay well hydrated and stay cool. We'll see you next time.